Hey, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade 6 practice problem review is on unit 3, lesson 14, solving percentage problems. And so for problem 1, for each problem explainer, show your reasoning. 160 is what percent of 40? Well, if we picture this kind of as a bar diagram for this type of question, or a tape diagram, 40 is our whole thing. And so how many 40s do we need to get to 160? Well, there's 40. 80, 120, and there's our 160. And so if this 40 represented 100%, we have four of these, and so it is 400%. 160 is 400% of 40. Other way of looking at this is as a table. And so if we have 40 is our 100%. So we can just kind of look at this as our number and our percent. How are we getting to 160? Well, we're, as we've already figured out, multiplying by 4. And so the right side of our table here gets us the 400%. And so that's question 1. It's 400%. For question 2, 40 is 160% of what number? Let's go to our table method for this one. Table and percentage. 40 is 160% of what number? Now that what number is going to be 100%. Now, if I look to do a middle step here, I can divide 160 by 8, and that gets me 20%. 40, if I divide by 8, gets me 5. And then my last step here, how do I get from 20% to 100%? Well, multiply by 5. Because 20 times 5 is 100, and 5 times 5 is 25. So, 40 is 160% of 25. And then what number is 40% of 160? Well, let's do our number and our percent. And we're asking ourselves, what number is 40% of 160? So, 160 is our 100% in this question. We're looking for what number is 40% of 160. And again, we can take that middle step idea here. In this question, if I divide by 10 for the 100, that breaks this down to a 10%. 160 divided by 10 is 16. So, you know, 16 is 10%. And then lastly, how do I get from 10 to 40? Well, multiply by 4, and 16 times 4 is 64. So 64 is 40% of 160. A store is having a 20% off sale on all merchandise. If May buys one item and saves $13, what was the original price of her purchase? Explain or show your reasoning. Now we could have a whole number line idea here, and that's one method to solve this question, where we'd have dollars on one of our number lines, and we could have percentages on the other. If you recognize here that buying something that's $13 is that 20% off, we can ask ourselves, well, how do I get to 100? Well, in a way, you're just multiplying by 5 here. And sure enough, if you take $13 times 5, you'd get $65. And that's one method of getting to our solution. Another method involves our good old table here. And so if we set up our dollar and our percentage, we know the $13 saved represents 20% off. So how can I get to 100? This time, again, it's just the one step, and we showed in our number line where we're multiplying by 5. 
And so 13 times 5 is 65. $65 represents the 100%. And so the original price of the item is $65. Problem three, the original price of a scarf was $16. During a store closing sale, a shopper saved $12 on the scarf. What percentage discount did she receive? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, I know we keep going to the table method here, but it seems to be working really well. The original price was $16. So $16 represents the 100%. During a store closing sale, a shopper saved $12. What percentage discount did she receive? Well, how do we get from 16 to 12? We need to find a middle step here. And so if we were to take our 16 and divide by four, we get $4. Take our 100% and divide by four, that's 25%. So $4 is 25%. And now can we get from four to 12? Sure, multiply by three, multiply the 25% by three, and we get 75%, which means $12 is 75% off. So 75% here is our solution. Select all the expressions whose value is larger than 100. Well, I'll just tell you the answers right away and then we'll explain it. You have A, D, and F. Let's make sure we understand why. 120% of 100, that means you're at 100 and getting bigger by 20%. And so this technically is 120, and so that's why that works. 50% of 150, half of 150 is 75, so that's not going to work. 150% of 50 sounds like it might work, but what is half of 50? Well, half of 50 is 25, so this solution's actually... 75. 20% of 80. Well, if I look at this over here as I'm running out of space, 10% of 80, or I'm sorry, 10% of 800, got ahead of myself, is 80. Well, if I double that, I get 160 because 10% doubled is 20%. So 20% here is 160, so D works. 200% means doubling. And so 200% of 30 is 60, so that's too small. 500% of 400, I don't even need to do that because that's like five times as big as 400. And so you're looking at a really big number that's much bigger than 100. And 1% 1 of 1,000 seems like it might work, but 10% of 1,000 is 100. 1% 1 of 1,000 is 10. So A, D, and F are our solutions to question four. And now we have a review question from lesson eight in this unit. An ant travels at a constant rate of 30 centimeters every two minutes. At what pace does the ant travel per centimeter? I love this question. So let's set up a table here, centimeters per minute. We're at 30 centimeters every two minutes. And what does our question ask? How at pace does the ant travel per centimeter? Which means we need to get our centimeter to one. And how do we do that? Well, we take our 30 and we divide by 30 to get to 1. And if we take 30 divided by 30 to get to 1, we have to take 2 divided by 30, as awkward as that answer seems. You get technically 2 thirtieths, which is the same thing as 1 fifteenth. And so the ant travels one centimeter in one fifteenth of a minute. Now, what about the second part? At what speed does the ant travel per minute? Let's restart our table here, okay? It might be the easiest thing to do. If we have our centimeters and our minutes here, we're looking for per minute. And so we're at 30 centimeters in two minutes. We need to get our two minutes down to one. Best way to do that, take two and divide by two. It means we're gonna take 30 and divide by two. 
and get 15. So what does this mean? The ant travels in one minute 15 centimeters. Interesting. So the speed here is 15 centimeters per minute. Over here it was 1 15th of a minute for one centimeter. Remember that whole reciprocal idea? Oh, good times, good review. From unit three, lesson four, is three and a half cups more or less than one liter? Explain or show your reasoning, knowing that one cup is 236 and six tenths milliliters, give or take some. Let's set up a table. Tables have been our friend this lesson, so let's just keep going with them. Cups and milliliters. We know one cup is 236 and 6 tenths milliliters. Well, if I first, let's find out what half a cup is. Well, if I divide by 2, I get 118 and 3 tenths. If I want to find out what 3 cups is then, all I have to do is take the 236 and 6 tenths times 3 and get 709 and 8 tenths. And to get three and a half, combine those two answers. Add those two, 118 and three tenths plus 709 and eight tenths, and you get about 828 and one tenth milliliters. Now that, remember, there are 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. And so this is actually equal to 0 0.8281 liters or so. And so that represents the three and a half cups that is less than one liter. And our last question from lesson two in this unit three, the distance of a doorknob from the floor is about, let's go with one yard, or you could say one meter as well. The thickness of a fingernail is about one millimeter. The volume of a drop of honey is about one milliliter. The weight or mass of a pineapple is about one, you could go kilogram or even um, pound here. The thickness, thickness of a picture book is about, you could say a centimeter. I think you could also say an inch, depending on how many pictures you get Shutterfly to put in that picture book. The weight or mass of a buffalo is about one ton. The volume of a flower vase is about one. Well, there's a bunch of answers here you could go with. I could understand cup. I could understand quart. And even if you had a really big flower vase, you could go with one liter. The weight or mass of 20 staples is about one gram. The volume of a melon is about one gallon. You think of like a watermelon or a really big cantaloupe, I suppose. It could be like a gallon of milk. The length of a piece of printer paper is about one foot. It's technically 11 inches, so it's about an inch short of a foot, but we won't go there. That's it for this practice problem review.